Shout out Royce Crispy on the intro. For real, for real. I like that. Go IG on Royce Crispy. You did. Link down in the description. What up, though? You already know how it goes. Smash, like, subscribe, comment. I don't care what you comment as long as you comment. You dig. Just make sure y'all smash all them links, man. Hit me up on Clubhouse. Make sure y'all get me up in there. Clubhouse. And invite me to y'all uh, 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 groups. Hit me up on Instagram. Hit me up on Facebook. Mess with your boy. Anyway, let's get right into this video. I'm going to speak on a few things, man. I'm going to drop a little video in between this two. I just want to show you how uh, gang culture is a little bit. Like how people mislead the youngest. I just want to show you this small little clip. And it's just it's, it's just weird to me, man. Some of the stuff these gang members do. So what I'm going to do right now is speak on Crips and MDLC. And I'm going to speak on gang culture a little bit. You know, tomorrow I ain't going to get too in-depth about it. I'm just going to give you my honest opinion about it. So before we get into it about Crips and MDLC, I want to say this. When you check out this clip right here, right? Drop right here. Yeah, homie, nigga. First through 1200. All right, looking for uh 1200 snails, clocks, and all that. Niggas calm over here, rare on red and all that on the dead homies, nigga. Through the street, nigga. And we got that on the dead. Don't act like niggas ain't just come from over there on the set, nigga. It's fuck all toast, period. First through 1200, 30 to 200, it don't matter. All naps. Gotta go, nigga. Hungry, bro. For my young life on Main Street business. Main Street. <laughs> oh, Main Street business. Damn, homies. <laughs> oh, 90s. Niggas know what up with the gang. Damn, homies. Gang culture to me, personally, gang banging, to me personally, is corny. You get a bunch of adolescents come from broken homes, missing fathers, and they gravitate towards the street to get that home feeling that they don't have, right? At the Sukasa, they don't have that family feeling. So they come to the streets and get it. And then these people in positions of, of power, they mislead these kids. Painting on murals of dead people. It's, it's not cool. Riding around spray painting, graffiti in your own neighborhood, driving down the property value. What point is it in that? Like, do you get paid for this artwork or what? Like, I'll be seeing like these California guys on here, especially California. I think the, the gangbang culture there is super corny. Super corny. I never see the videos where they're in the hood, they throwing gang signs, they tagging up stuff, but they got houses they own, they got cars, glowing, good cars, they they got an entertainment company. They up and coming rappers, um, known, making good show money. I just don't see it. I know it's gonna be a lot of corny individuals in the comments talking about, yeah, I know rich gang members. I know they don't. Now, not a lot of us don't. It's this a very small percentage of not just even about being rich, but people that's like super financially stable legally. I mean, even illegally. Like, how many of them you see really winning? You don't see it, but I, I just think it's. California gangbanging is very influential at a point in time, but I think it's just played out in 2022. I think it's just played out as corny. The oversized shirts, you're all red and you're all blue on, going to people's neighborhoods looking for certain colors. I just think it was corny. Charleston White said something very prolific. Man, he said that, and I agree with him 100%, he said the Bloods and Crips don't kill more people than the Klan. People who get together and, and go into high positions in life to dictate rules and laws and things like that. The judicial system, they go in and systematically try to destroy certain communities, certain type of people, the classism, right? And they don't kill more people than these people that got power, right? It, it, it's just nothing, like, how could I worship a guy like Tiki Williams? And I'm not, and, and when I'm on here and I'm talking about infamous people from Detroit, I'm not bigging them up like, oh yeah, what they did was right. This is it's entertainment. I'm telling you about it. I'm never being braggadocious about a guy like Lil Larry that don't did this to innocent people. A guy like uh, him, him, and him. I'm not bragging about that. I'm telling you something for the entertainment value. This is about money also, too. You deal with what I'm talking about? This is about entertainment, too. Everything not going to be 100% positive, but I, I just want y'all to understand I'm not being braggadocious about none of this stuff, right? How could I worship a man 
that killed two hotel clerks. And his own homeboy said, he said, I think it was Melvin Farmer. Melvin Farmer said, well, he didn't do the, the double homicide or the triple, I think it was triple or double. He didn't do that, but he did kill somebody else in a robbery. Like, you taking somebody else's possessions that they work hard for, kill them, and I'm supposed to be out here seed up with you, oh, you a legend, this, this, and that. Nah. Uh-uh, you know what I mean? People he misled down the rock, lose their life, lose their freedom. You know how many bloods and crips misled the youth? Now all these missing father, fathers in the household. I think California culture is corny. I think they corny out there. You know the way they dress, I just think it's corny, right? The way they rap. I think it's corny. What they rap about, I just think it's corny. 100% all this gang banging in your music, like, Man, it's 2022, and you still got guys riding around graffiti and on walls and not even doing a good job at it. Not even doing a good job at it. But this, this is what we support, man. It is what it is. Now, Crips and the Michigan Department of Corrections, right? They, they non-existence. They, they, they don't have a rotation. And like I told y'all, rotation, the word rotation, function, mobbing, uh, moving, this means you are part of the family. You are entitled to the privileges of the family as long as you follow these rules. So if I'm off count, if I'm off rotation, if I'm off, if I'm off mobbing, that means I might still be crip, I might still be blood, but I'm not entitled to no privileges. Nobody going to aid and assist me in no righteous or unrighteous endeavors. I'm to the wolves. I get into it with somebody. I have no backup besides one of my homies or something like that. And whatever gang he belongs to, if they want to get involved, they get involved. But... Usually you're by yourself. And prison people take sides when it, when it go down. People go to their own people when it go down. We separate. And then you got the lone wolves out there. And ain't nothing wrong with being a lone wolf. It's a lot of people that do it. Uh, not very many, excuse me, not very many, but the people that do it, some of them are dogs, monsters by themselves, man. So what I see a lot in, in Michigan Department of Corrections, and one thing I, th I don't understand is why, People here in Michigan, Detroit in particular, or surrounding areas, why do they hate Crips so much? Like, we just had a plethora of Crips terrorizing people, then the Bloods came about to defend the community, and they got this long history of just rivalry. I don't, I don't understand it, but I guess it's not for me to understand. Maybe somebody can explain that to me. I, I doubt y'all can, right? Um, I seen Bloods go to Crips because they don't have no numbers, right? So if they had numbers, the politics would change. But since they don't, I've seen Bloods go to Crips and say, hey, I don't want to see you shaking up no seeds on the yard. You better not start no mob. You better not recruit nobody. You definitely better not recruit none of mine. And y'all can stay on the yard. And I've seen the Crips not say nothing. Because the Bloods are 60, 70 deep. It's only two of them on the yard. It's only three of them on the yard. So, you know, and the GD stopped eight balling with them. That's the pitchfork and the and the seat together. They stopped eight balling with them, supporting them and stuff like that because they felt like Crips just want to get behind them for protection. So y'all know the disrespectful word for Crips is crabs. You will hear that all day in MDOC from the Bloods. Even GDs will say crab, 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 crab. So just imagine how Crip in a day room feel when somebody's saying crab and they can't say nothing. A lot of those guys don't really even stand on principles and morals anyway, so they be so scared they'll flip over to becoming a Damu. I never heard of a blood turn into a crib in MDLC. Oh, excuse me, one time I had a white guy. Uh, and, and they terrorized him to the point he didn't want to come back out at Marquette Level 5. Terrorized. Every time he go in the yard, he getting took off the yard. If a new recruit come in for a certain blood set, they'll say, hey, okay, you're going to prove yourself, make your bones, get your stripes. They'll go pick a random crib and say, here, go cut him. Here, go beat him up with no consequences or repercussions behind that because there ain't many of them. Now, I seen one yard where they did get a little deep, and it was probably like 25 of them, and it was probably only like 40 bloods. The respect level changed. I'm not saying there's no Crips out there that don't stand on nothing, like little Six Mile stand on it, even though he'd get knocked upside his head, get jumped on, get in fights. He like six, seven years past his out date, but he going to stand on Crip 24-7. He going to stand on it, right? Um, Scott Pontiac named Tank, big bodybuilder, tattoos all over his face. Pontiac. When he in the day room, you don't hear the crab word. You don't hear the disrespectful word because he really is stepping. Now, it's another tank. I believe he from Detroit and maybe moved, caught his case in Saginaw or something like that. 
older guy, got about 70 years, speak like two different languages, very, very smart brother about his 50s, but Tank very, very well respected, and you don't hear that when he around because he ain't got nothing to lose. He a monster, people respect him. He teach everybody, he give everybody knowledge and information, give them free Spanish lessons. Every day he wake up and give free Spanish lessons. And that was some of the coldest stuff I seen because people gravitated towards him for information. So I'm not saying there ain't no Crips to stand on what they stand on, but it's very few and far between. Uh, Crips are irrelevant in MDLC. So for those who want to know, MDLC is not a place you want to be at if you're a Crip because it can become dangerous, especially on the level four yards where they ain't got nothing to do. They ain't got nothing to do at all, especially on the yard where it's a bunch of young boys trying to iron their stripes. They're going to pick something with you. They're going to disrespect you. They're going to get sent at you randomly. It's crazy, man. I would not want to be a Crip in MDLC. I wouldn't want to be a gang member, really, at all. And there's a difference between gangs and organizations. There's a difference between being in the gang and gang banging. I, I'm, I'm saying the gang banging aspect of it is corny to me. The gang banging aspect. I don't have no problem with a group of brothers getting together with like ideology and finding a destiny, you know what I'm saying, or paving a a way to a destiny, but a lot of these people join these gangs, they have no morals and purposes besides chaos, destruction, gang banging, and illegal activities. And like I said, I look at life for what it is, not what it's supposed to be. Even if it is illegal activities involved, the boys still ain't getting no money. You have them, they have a boys stand on this block all day, just 16 hours just to make a $100 profit, $150 profit. Like bro, you could have went to McDonald's and got that bro. You know what I'm saying? Just like the video I showed you, it's actually there's two of them. Like, look how misleading the one brother is. Like, you got these little kids out here on Main Street business. Like, these little kids, man. Little kids. You could be getting them all together, teaching them about credit. You can get them all together, teaching them about getting a trade before they graduate away high school. How to get into a temp circle. Like, you could be teaching them that type of stuff. How to apply for business loans how to build their credit, how to do this, how to get lit. You could be teaching them all this, but instead you want to teach them gang signs, walking up and down the street with no purpose. Then you see the other video where a guy, you know, look like he a mama's boy, riding around, talking about he looking for certain people and tagging on walls and stuff like that in his own community. I don't understand it much. I, I do know what poverty bring. I do know what go on in the hood. I know the senseless acts of violence and violence and, and vandalism and things like that. I do understand it, but I was never really into it. Never really into it, especially in, in this day and age when we got the internet. You expect the brothers to be a little bit more conscious. So let, let it boil down to this: Don't go to prison. But if you do, I wouldn't be a crip. A lot of people follow that up and don't even make mention of it in the MDLC. And it's a smart thing to do. It ain't the coward thing to do. I'm just, if if I'm in a Christian country and I know they decapitate Muslims, you think I'm going to go over there and, and and claim to be Muslim or Muslim? I'm going to blend in with the Christians. I'm going to pray just like the Christians, but I know in my head, my heart, who I am. The Quran even states that you can do that. If you outnumber or you're in this, you can pretend like you convert. It just happened, bro. It's, it's survival with a fittest in the joint, man. Peace and blessings be to y'all. Big five.